Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time to tune into this program. And we believe it will be a real blessing to you. At the end of the broadcast, we're going to give you an address and a telephone number, how to receive information. And we believe that this information is valuable information. And we also have a CD called The Father's Name and also have a CD called True Oneness. And you know, the most valuable information that there is is the Scripture and the Epistles. And we know that the Scriptures is what come first. And when I'm talking about Scripture, I'm talking about what people know today known as the Old Testament writings. And the way things are being taught today, when you start dealing with, let's say, Scripture, of course, there's a Hebrew word called katab, and the word for Scripture, the first place you actually find it is actually in the book of Daniel, the 10th chapter, in verse 21. And in, in the Hebrew Scripture, it's called Biktav, or Biktav Emet, which actually means the Scripture of Truth. And, of course, the word Emet is the word for truth. But just the root word for Scripture is the word called Katav. And it's a writing, it's a document. And if we can understand this, we can understand, matter of fact, that the Messiah Himself, according to what our New Testaments teach. We find that he quoted from Scripture is what we find. Such as like over in the book of Mark, 12.10. It talks about him quoting about the, the stone which the builders had rejected. And you know when <clears throat> that once you really begin to study this, so then you understand that the Messiah was quoting from the book of Psalms hundred and eighteen twenty two in what we have today known as the book of Mark 12.10 when he talks about the stone the builders rejected. The scriptures is the only thing that the Messiah had when he walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago. Now you talk about valuable information. This is valuable information. The true Messiah quoted from Scripture in other words, from let's say from Genesis to Malachi. 
we find that on the day of Pentecost, Apostle Peter, who was the man that had the keys to the kingdom, he quoted from the Scripture. Matter of fact, he quoted from the book of Joel, according to the book of Acts, or excuse me, the book of what well, yeah, the book of Acts, the second chapter, the sixteenth verse down to verse twenty one. He actually quoted the book of Joel. So the early assembly established the early assembly on the scriptures of the Old Testament. And I find that what we're talking about right now, a lot of people are really not being taught this. They're they're actually being taught to just take and throw the Old Testament out to when they only want only when they want to use it. I said only when they want to use it. So last week we were in the book of Galatians, and matter of fact, we're going back over to the book of Galatians. And we're going to read verse 6 in chapter 1. So in the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 6. We're going to read this again. Because I think it's very important to understand that the Apostle Paul at this particular time, when he began to write this, there were certain things taking place. And matter of fact, if you search this out for yourself, you find that the book of Galatians itself was written roughly between 56 to 58, give or take, one way or the other. We find in the book of Galatians, 1 and 6 now, as we usually say every week, We're reading from a red letter edition of King James Bible. And of course, when we come again, when we come and we see like the name of Jesus written there, well, we understand that the name of Jesus is less than 250 years old, give or take. And it was not even in the original 1611 King James Bible. So, if the name of Jesus was not in the original 1611 King James Bible, then should not we have a little concern about some things? Should not we study and find out what is really going on? See, I don't believe that you've just turned over to this or tuned in to this program because you didn't have nothing else to do. I believe that that you have tuned into this program by divine guidance of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh that wrote both the Old and New Testament.
and you will be able to judge everything that we say. You'll be able to judge everything that we say because we're going to be reading from a red letter edition King James Bible. So it won't be hard for you to understand it. Now, we use different translations just like anyone that would study. We'll read different translations on here on this program just like anyone else would do. But when you find out that the name of Jesus was never in the original 1611 King James Bible, then this is where you need to really study. See, I, I've been confronted with this. I was confronted with this in about the middle of the 80s. And of course, at that particular time, I really didn't know how to go about studying on the true name of the Creator of Heaven and Earth. So, I done all that I could, and that was all I could do. But then, after I had done all that I could do, then y'all would look like just made ways to send the right people in my path. And again, we're reading from a red letter edition King James Bible. You'll be able to study with us. We use different concordance, different Hebrew concordances, and so forth. And you can search this for yourself. But these programs are all about getting people to study. We're not trying to provoke no one to anger. And, and matter of fact, the majority of every call that we get, and we get a lot of calls, We've been able to put this on radio for several years and also on TV. And we have actually got calls, write, uh, letters from just about all around the world. And people, some people at first would disagree. But then they start searching. Of course, it's easy to hear something that comes against you or come get, uh, comes against something you're teaching. And it's just uh, nature. Your nature to want to defend it. But the majority of the calls that we get are positive because people start searching their Bibles. And what I like about this is that you can take your King James Bible and you can study this for yourself. You do not have to destroy your King James Bible. You have to understand how your Bible was put together. And that's what become a real blessing to me. 
So over in the book of Galatians, in chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, and we read this last week, we're going to read this again. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of, of course, King James here says Christ, unto another gospel. Now, Apostle Paul is talking about or is talking to or writing to the Galatians about them being soon removed from him that called you into the grace of the Messiah unto another gospel. Now, Apostle Paul is writing an epistle, what becomes epistle to us, and it becomes instructions to us also. This is not something that was written and put together in the day and hour we're living in now. These were instructions for an assembly nearly 2,000 years ago that were facing issues, problems. There were different doctrines taking place even at that time. Even at that time, different things was happening. And Paul talks about being removed from, in other words, being removed from the one that had called them unto another gospel. The word gospel here is the Hebrew word known as basura. Gospel. Actually, it means tidings. Now, Apostle Paul was not teaching but one true name and that was the name of Yahweh. Apostle Paul was not teaching a name that was less than 250 years old. Apostle Paul was giving witness to what was at that particular time what he knew as Scripture from the Old Testament. That's why if you would take, matter of fact, the word for Scripture, run it out, study it out. Apostle Paul talks about in the book of Galatians, the third chapter, verse 8. He says, and the scripture foreseeing. He is talking about the scripture. And when he's talking about the scripture, he's not talking about the book of Galatians. Matter of fact, sometimes I think, well, I want to get on through this and because there's so much in this. But then when I get looking at this, you know, I don't know that I just want to speed on through it because just verse 6 itself. I said verse 6 itself. When you look at verse 6, 
or, or which verse 6 in chapter 1 of 6. 1, chapter 1, verse 6, when Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into grace uh, and into the grace of Messiah unto another gospel. When Apostle Paul is talking about this, and you look in the book of Galatians, where I just quoted in the book of Galatians 3 and 8, in the book of Galatians here in 3 and 8, where we just quoted that Apostle Paul used the word Scripture and the Scripture for sin. And in the book of Galatians 3.22, Apostle Paul says, But the Scripture have concluded. Now, I'm not reading all these verses. I'm just reading the ones right now because of time. That, you, that Paul actually talked about the Scripture. And also in Galatians 4 and 30. Paul said, Neither less that what saith the Scripture. In other words, three places in the book of Galatians, Apostle Paul has referred to the Scripture talking about the Old Testament. Now, this is valuable information. And I pray that you will study this out because this is so important. I said this is so important because I have found by talking to people, people calling, that people in a way are shocked to find that Paul quoted from the Scripture. Now, I know that sounds strange, but when you're on this end and you hear these calls and the people talking, and it's like a revelation that really comes to them about how the New Testament come about. I said come about once they really get a hold of this. Again, going back over to the book of Galatians. I'm, I'm in Galatians. I'll probably stay in it right now for a little bit. I didn't really want to. I, there's so much I'm wanting to get on to. But I don't want to just override this because I believe there is so much to this here. Paul is saying, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you. He's he was not talking to us today. This was to a group of people back nearly 2,000 years ago that he seen being removed and he was trying to establish them. They were being removed from, uh, from the Messiah unto another gospel. Now, first of all, I have been raised, and I've said this over and over, but I say it again. I have been raised apostolic, Pentecostal, all my life. This is all I've ever known. And my granddaddy taught us 
Acts 2.38 the same way that everyone has been taught Acts 2 and 38. I said that's I have been raised on Acts 2 and 38. Where it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you. In the name, and the King James, I'm reading how the King James says, Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of. Now I'm going to stop right here on this. I'm still dealing with Galatians because Galatians is so important here that there was something happening to a group of people that had been established by Paul or by Apostle Paul and Peter was the man that had the keys to the kingdom. We know that Apostle Paul was converted several years later after the experience on the Pentecost. So several years went by before Paul had the vision and y'all visited him. But we find in that Acts 2.38, I've been taught Jesus Christ all my life. That's all I've ever known. Until I was confronted with the truth. Now, for me to be misled to something, then that means that I would have to believe in something that was truth. But when I find that the real Acts 2.38 was never based on Jesus Christ, then that told a total different story. And it looks like that we're going to have to end here because our program is just about to come to an end here on this broadcast. We have a CD that's called The Father's Name and literature that was sent out along with it. We also have a CD that's called True Oneness. You can write Brother Jerry 775 MacDonald Road Covington, Georgia 30014 That's Brother Jerry, 775 MacDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014. Telephone number is 770-784-0703. Telephone number again is 770-784-0703. We have a website that you can go to. It's called Yahweh Ministries. You spell Yahweh this way, and you can go straight to the website. Spell it Y-A-H, as in Yah, as in saying Hallelujah. You spell it Y-A-H-W-A-H, put a hyphen, and then ministries.org. And it does look like our time has come and gone. Telephone number once again is 770-784-0703. We do come on at the same time every week. So time you should listen to us now is the time we come on every week. So till the next broadcast at this same time, we're going to be preaching the truth by the grace and mercy of Yahweh. So till the next broadcast, same time, we appreciate you. We love you. Shalom.